One of the most important skills in tennis is consistency. And if you can't get the ball to go where you want, when you want, then that's an issue. And in this drill, or this first part, is a challenge. Basically, if you can do this challenge, then you're probably consistent enough that you don't have to watch the rest of this video. But if you can't do this challenge, then the rest of this video is gonna help you develop a higher level of consistency. So let's go do the challenge and find out. Now let the challenge begin. So this is how it's gonna work. We're gonna go short, deep, cross court, and then yellow, meaning deep, and then pink. So we're working our way around. And you get four balls, so let's go. Not bad. And again, we're trying to get it close. Ooh, almost. Ooh. Okay, so if you had an issue with any of those cones getting the ball to go at least close to those quadrants, then you need to listen to the rest of this video because I'm gonna tell you about what I call the four knobs, the four means of adjusting to get the ball to go where you want. If you don't understand these, then basically you're not gonna be able to consistently hit the ball where you want because you won't know what to adjust if you're not hitting it. Now here's the one thing, I know it's a challenge and you're like, well, shouldn't you just hit every ball where you want? It's not gonna happen. We have to make sure that we get close and if we don't, we need to be able to make an adjustment. But what do we adjust? And this is why the four knobs are important to understand. So knob number one is the racket face. Wherever the racket face is looking at contact, that's where the ball's gonna go. Meaning that if I'm hitting a ball and let's say it's going too high, a lot of players are like, well, uh, I'll swing up more or swing down more. Well, I can swing down but have the racket face open, it'll still go high. What I really need to do is close the racket face a little bit and bingo, that's the small adjustment I make. Now, really quick note, when I'm talking about closing and opening the racket face, I'm not talking about opening or changing my grip, just changing the angle of when I'm doing this. That's it. The second knob that's really important to understand is timing. Timing allows me to hit the ball cross court or down the line. If you don't understand timing, it could be really hard. For a long time, when I switched from a two-handed backhand to a one-handed backhand, I used to struggle with hitting the one-handed backhand down the line. I would reach out in front thinking like, oh, I just gotta hit in front more, and I could never do it because I didn't have a good grasp on the idea of timing and letting the ball come back a little bit more. And so if I wanna go more cross-court, I would swing earlier, which would cause the racket to look cross-court versus going down the line. Now, one quick note that I think the swing is. The swing is a circular swing but it comes around and again goes through the ball and then continues that circle again. So you do see the player swing around their body, but as they're getting to that contact zone, they're extending out, making sure the strings look towards the contact as long as possible before that circular motion has to continue. Now, number three is spins or path, meaning that most of the balls I've hit so far have had top spin, meaning I'm coming up on the ball or you can hit it flatter coming through the ball, or you can down on the ball. Now this is really important that you understand spin, because spin, top spin, will bring the ball down to the court earlier. So if I hit a lot of top spin, like on a windy day like this, I can protect myself, even if I, let's say, hit the ball super high, with enough spin, it'll still come down. Now, if I hit this flat and high, uh-uh. It's not coming down. The same thing works with backspin, but backspin has the opposite effect. It's gonna keep the ball in the air longer. Okay, hit the ball machine. And that's key to understand depending on the shot you wanna hit. The fourth knob is the amplifier. The amplifier is power. So let's say I hit one ball in the short, one option to get it deeper is just to hit harder. But if I hit too hard, that's what could happen. So now that you understand these four knobs, let me show you a drill you can do to really nail down how to make sure you're consistently hitting the ball where you want to. So although we talked about four different knobs, what I recommend is you don't turn all the knobs at once because it's too much to fathom of trying to adjust. Just think about this. If I'm constantly adjusting my spin, my timing, and the racket face, then each one kind of plays into the other one. So we don't want to do that. So what we really want to do is focus just on the racket face first. So meaning that I'm going to keep my timing going cross court, let's say towards the green target, which is the deep cross court target first. And then I'm going to keep my speed the same or my power, my amplifier same, and I'm going to keep my spin the same. So if I do that and I'm going to on purposely hit the ball short by closing the racket face too much, ooh, that's really short. So I'm going to open it up a little bit more. So you see how that's deeper? And then boom. I'm just opening up and it's going higher. Now that's one avenue where I would practice this shot like 15 times. Let's say if we're going for the green one, I drop it, okay? 
So notice where the ball landed, and this is super important, that I do this consciously even when I'm rallying. That ball was very close to the baseline. It was very to the left of the target right now. So what that means is I need to adjust my timing a tiny bit, okay? I keep the height probably about the same. Bingo, so the timing's there, so I just need to adjust the height a little bit more. So you can see how I'm dancing around, which is totally okay. As long as I'm right around there, I'm good. But as, if I'm getting too close to something, I might have to adjust something else. But notice how the height was pretty good. And that's how I would work this. Just start off with one thing first and then make a small adjustment. Too many times what we do is we hit one, it's like, okay, I'm gonna adjust the power now, I'm gonna adjust my timing, and I'm gonna adjust the height. And you don't know which one really you need to adjust too much. Now, one other quick thing. Make sure you do this type of drill where you're trying to hit 10 to 15 balls at one target so you can start experiencing what it feels like to have this sensation of hitting the ball towards a target. So your mind starts to build the connections so when you think about it, you can start executing this more often. Because ideally, when you get to the court, you're not gonna be thinking about, okay, racket face, this, my knob, this. These are instinctual things that you develop by hitting a lot of balls. So that one's a little long. I've already made the adjustment. And you can see how it stays pretty consistent. I could have maybe swung a little bit earlier, but today, a little windy, I wanna play it a little safe, but it's right around the target area. If you understand this, you can basically master hitting any ground stroke, whether it be forehand or backhand, because it's all the same. So make sure you start working on this. And if you wanna take your consistency to another level and go even deeper on understanding this with the right mindsets, make sure you check the link in the description because I have a special free course for you if you wanna understand how to improve your consistency.